I call Elaine Smith to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to make a short intervention in support of the amendments lodged by Joanne Lamont being considered in this Group 1. Over the last few weeks, members from across the Chamber have spoken up against the growing inequalities faced by women in our society, all expressing concerns about the unacceptability of continuing violence and abuse against women and the urgent need to take action. And Joanne Lamont, Polly McNeill and Joan McAlpine have just uh, outlined that as well in their contributions. Yet today, when we're discussing measures to tackle hate crime, the Cabinet Secretary proposes to refer the inclusion of the characteristic of sex as an aggravator to a working group. A working group. It's not just Joanne Lamont who's concerned about that. Women across Scotland are asking, is that really the best that this parliament can do? And this is not a new discussion. 13 years ago, in 2008, my colleague Marlon Glenn raised the same point as the parliament considered the offences aggregated by prejudice bill However, violence against women, misogyny and hatred of women was not included. And during the evidence sessions on this hate crime bill, voices from the Muslim community called for support for mechanisms to measure hate crimes perpetrated against Muslim women. I agree with all those grassroots women's organisations who spoke up during the evidence sessions and with all those who cannot understand why we would effectively exclude women in this piece of legislation. And as the working group gets on with its work, additional measures to tackle misogyny can, of course, be considered. Although I think a response to Polly McNeill's question on that would be most welcome when the Cabinet Secretary rises. For the legislation to be meaningful and understood, we have a responsibility to be very clear on what this Parliament means when defining men and defining women as two sexes. I know from the correspondence that I have received that the people of Scotland, in their great majority, understand that too. We can't put women's concerns and fears to one side, and I am shocked by the lack of serious consultation with the women of Scotland and by the number of men queuing up to tell women what we should think, how we should feel, and frankly, trying to stop our voices being heard. I support the amendments in this group in the name of Joanne Lamont.